Now we called everywhere. <laughs> we called everywhere because we were trying to make noise. I think if anything, it's made a lot of us even more motivated to be nurses and to really make an impact in the healthcare field. This program is so important for not only me, but for millions of people who are waiting for their loved ones to call them and say, hey, I'm okay. Here at Stitch, we celebrate the ways everyday people are making this country a kinder place to live, one incredible story at a time. People didn't stop needing help when COVID-19 hit, but it did get harder to help. These stories spotlight kind-hearted volunteers who try to make the pandemic a little more manageable for others. What started with a few retired nurses helping frontline workers quickly grew, soon becoming an army of 60 retired medical workers doing their best to crush COVID-19. As a nurse, you just feel this calling. You have to help. When Lori first started Nurses Crushing COVID, it was made up of just three retired nurses ready to assist frontline workers. I am supporting the true heroes in this pandemic, which are the frontline doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists. I felt like it was the least I could do. But interest in the Arkansas-based group blossomed, leading to a 60-person team of volunteers. And it's way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I had no idea that this many people were gonna reach out. That includes retired nurses, physicians, and other qualified workers, like Dr. Howard, who has been retired for 15 years, and his wife, Christine. We imagined ourselves traveling. <laughs> <laughs> but that's off the list, right? While he administered vaccines, Christine spent time with anxious patients to keep them calm. I've never done a volunteer thing where I've been so rewarding. And, you know, people are just like, oh, I get to go visit my grandchild now. By early March in 2021, the doctor had already vaccinated nearly a thousand people. Lori said the patients couldn't be more grateful for the work nurses crushing COVID has done. People are so appreciative. They almost make you feel like you've invented the vaccine. They're, thank you, thank you. And I'm, You're welcome, I, I'm just giving it to you. I had nothing else to do with it. In our next story, volunteers proved a helping hand can look like anything, including a pan of lasagna. Grab a noodle. Right before her son had surgery, a woman was introduced to Lasagna Love. A friend told Heather about the group, which delivers food to families in need. Ben said, hey, why don't you sign up for this? Request one on the day he's having surgery. Don't cook. You have too much to do. She was really, really worried about the stress and you know, times are tough. Not only did she sign up, but she soon decided to keep the love going. Heather and her nine-year-old daughter, Michaela, joined the campaign, which has around 18,000 volunteers across the country. And I can see a large influx of members lately. This has only been going for about a year, so it's still very new. And a lot of people have no idea that we're out here and that you can do this and it's absolutely free. The lasagnas are personalized too, whether they're hot, cold, or made gluten-free. The food is then dropped off on people's doorsteps. But one lasagna love volunteer, Dory, said it was a nice way to connect with others during the pandemic. It feels really nice to know the name of the person or the family members that are receiving the lasagna. It just makes the whole process a little bit more personal. Though they were still students when the pandemic began, that didn't stop hundreds of future nurses from making a difference. It was definitely scary when it first started. When Delaney began nursing school at the University of Central Florida, she had no idea a global pandemic would soon disrupt the U.S. healthcare system. She was inspired to enroll by her mother, a nurse herself. Seeing the connections that she made with her patients, and that really inspired me. She was still a student when COVID-19 hit, but Delaney still jumped at the chance to help by administering doses of the vaccine. There are a few people that asked to have themselves videotaped um, while they were getting the shot. There's a lot of people who have been waiting a long time for this vaccine and have been very careful and very afraid to leave their houses. She became one of hundreds of nursing students giving out the vaccine across Central Florida. Essentially, our nursing students can help offset some of their staffing. The needs are great. They were observed by their instructors during their shifts, and the teachers were keenly aware that this was a make or break time for their students. They're in a pivotal point where they really had a decision to make because when they started nursing school, 
this was not the reality. I think if anything, it's made a lot of us even more motivated to be nurses and to really make an impact in the healthcare field. Next, to help patients combat COVID-19 isolation, this doctor went above and beyond by keeping them company off the clock. To not be able to, to hug a loved one or touch them and think of the worst, like what if, you know, because he did go down very quickly. You think of these things and how they are so alone and just by themselves. With her husband in the hospital with COVID-19, Carrie felt helpless. The closest she could get to him was to sit under his window, which she did each night. And I was able to walk up to the window and hold up the camera and show, you know, my daughter who's six and doesn't understand why, you know, daddy, can't come home. But the isolation was difficult for both of them. He knew that he wasn't doing so well, and it, he was scared. Carrie's husband recovered physically, but she credits one doctor in particular for preserving his mental state, Dr. Ben Moore, who would stay by his bedside. I just kind of sit with him, chat or not chat, and kind of hold a hand. For have, you know, Dr. Moore call me and say, I just saw him, he had a smile on his face. It meant so much, it meant so much. Once he became fully vaccinated, the doctor volunteered to spend his time with patients after his shifts. I think it's changed now that we've been vaccinated. I think that puts people in a better frame of mind to be able to do the things that are not wholly medical. Along with Dr. Ben, dozens of staff members at his hospital donated time to lonely patients. For Carrie and many others, these generous volunteers were a godsend. This program is so important for not only me, but for millions of people who are waiting for their loved ones to call them and say, hey, I'm okay. After hearing this senior was having trouble scheduling her first dose, a good Samaritan stepped in, getting her an appointment and a ride. Today, I am getting my shot. It was only two days ago, I think I found out. I could not believe it. Cheryl from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, tried for hours to get a vaccine appointment, but came up empty-handed. After hearing Cheryl's story on the local news, a viewer named Heather stepped in to help. She got Cheryl an appointment and enlisted her friend Michelle to drive her. Excited to help you out. Okay. Thank you. I'm really happy to be a part of this because I understand the struggle that Cheryl's been having trying to get her shot. At a nearby pharmacy, Cheryl filled out the paperwork and got her first dose. We've had a, a lot of people waiting a long time to get them. So I'm glad that they can get in and get them. You all feel it. Thing. I believe you. Cheryl was able to schedule her second shot and she shared what a comfort it was to get the first one. I can't even describe it. I'm in here relieved. Like, like I've been holding my breath and I just took a good breath. Next, when it came to getting seniors from marginalized communities fully vaccinated, this volunteer wouldn't take no for an answer. Now we called everywhere. <laughs> we called everywhere because we were trying to make noise. Seniors in one Pittsburgh neighborhood were able to get their first vaccine dose at their local YMCA, which serves the Homewood area. But roughly a thousand people soon found their second appointments were canceled. It got scary when we weren't getting the second one we should have. A woman named Jean refused to accept that, instead organizing a group of nearly 50 volunteers. They put pressure on community leaders to ensure these residents got their second shots in the recommended time frame. She has talked to a lot of different people to try to set up information to get us straight. So yes, she was very helpful. I, I can't words than express what she has done. Jean said she got a message which said the second dose appointments many people were given had been postponed. I was really upset that the senior and elderly population had to be victimized yet again. They've been victimized all their lives. They don't have the medical care that they need. Thanks to the volunteers' hard work, residents could finally schedule appointments for their second shots. Jean was grateful her mother and her aunt both in their 90s, could get fully vaccinated. Finally, a pair of seniors continued their work for a medical clinic during the pandemic. So the staff honored their treasured volunteers with an epic 90th birthday surprise. There's something to do, keeps you busy, keeps you going, you know. As a volunteer, sometimes the only pat on the back you get is the satisfaction of a job well done. That is, unless you're Fran and Julia, 
a pair of beloved senior volunteers who donate their time to St. Luke's free medical clinic. In spite of the pandemic, Fran continued filing and Julia kept doing referrals at the clinic in South Carolina. They also both celebrated their 90th birthdays in early 2021. So the staff surprised them with crowns, cake, and 90 and fabulous sashes. A lot of nice people here, a lot of nice people here. Fran and Julia have volunteered at the free clinic for 16 years, with the facilities director calling them the heart and soul of the work they do. The Lord expects us to let his light shine through us. And if we can help somebody else, that's what he means for us to do. We hope you enjoyed these stories of volunteers helping their communities throughout the pandemic. Thanks for watching Stitch.